the collecting power of telescope So it's a measure of how much light the telescope can collect. It determines how bright the image that you're going to be seeing. The collecting power is proportional to the area of the opening of the telescope. Okay? How big the opening is. The aperture equals the diameter of the telescope. Therefore, the collecting power is proportional to aperture squared. Why? Because the surface area of a circle is equal to pi times radius squared. Right? The surface area is pi times radius squared. Since the collecting power is proportional to the area, and the area is proportional to radius squared, that means the collecting power is proportional to radius squared. And then the radius is also proportional to the diameter. Right now, I'm not writing it as an equation. I'm writing it more as a proportionality. So the collecting power is proportional to diameter squared, and therefore the aperture is the diameter. So what this shows you here is two telescopes, this one and this one. This one happens to be, you see, if I take my finger here and I move it over here, you see, half the size of that one. I have to put another one, you see. So this is double the diameter of this one. So suppose this was a four-inch telescope. It would be called a four-inch telescope. This would be a what? An eight-inch telescope. How much more collecting power would that have? How many times more collecting power? Collecting power of that one divided by the collecting power of this one. What's the ratio of their diameters? How much bigger is that one than this? Twice bigger, right? So you do 2 squared. Why squared? Because the collecting power is proportional to aperture squared. So that's equal to 4. This would have 4 times the collecting power. So its value in the market, it might cost you about 4 times as much to purchase this versus this. You see? So this one, I'm going to show you this one throughout this lecture. I'll bring it also on Wednesday. You see this one here? This one would be a, a four-inch telescope. As a matter of fact, it says on it, uh, it's about a four-and-a-half-inch telescope. It says right here, 4.5-inch, you see? And this is the end. So from here to here, four and a half inches. So this is pretty expensive. I mean, something like this might be about 300, 400, 500 dollars. Depends on how many things it comes with, whether it's remote, uh, re whether it has computer uh, you know, capability, everything. But if you get eight inch, that'll be about this big. You have four times the collecting power. It will give you four times as bright of an image. Is it more expensive? Oh, yeah, you bet you. The price goes way up, you see. Uh, so if this one gives you this kind of an image of a galaxy, this one will give you this much image. You see the ends of the galaxy? It's not coming out in the picture. It's too dim. Here, it comes out. And even the side, the galaxy on the side is too so small. Here, it looks much brighter, you see. So if you wanted to buy a telescope, kind of to start with, I would say four inches is good, you know, about three, four hundred dollars or something, five hundred dollars. Eight inch is more you're going bigger, you know. That's you're talking about a thousand maybe, a thousand one hundred, thousand two hundred. Some of the pros have like a sixteen inch, you know. Something like this, more than a foot. Those are some serious telescopes. Okay, so that's what this uh, next paragraph tells you. Uh, if a telescope A has an aperture of two inches, B has four inches, then the collecting power of telescope B will be four times. You see, because this is twice as big as that, and so will the price roughly. If telescope C has an aperture of six inches, 
it will have nine times the collecting power. Why? Six over two, six divided by two is three. Three squared is nine. So nine times the collecting power. If telescope D has uh, 10 inches, then its collecting power is 25 times the two inch telescope. Really, really big. You see, 